I think you can never know that truthfully. I mean, I think that who your audience is is sort of beholden to what the piece becomes. And although I kind of knew what it would be, you know, outside of just like people who are exactly like me culturally, you know, I was kind of like, I didn't, I didn't necessarily know. Um, but I did think in terms of exhibition space, it will be more in the museums or the galleries as opposed to, to movie theaters, irrespective of who would actually come to see it, you know, and those people's identities. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think that my film's audience is whoever I, the person who made it, can mobilize to go see it on some level. And I think that that's a strange reality that we live with, it, it would, especially when making art films and personal films, is that, I mean, anyone connect, can connect to my movie. It's not like super specific in any way that would alienate anyone. It's just, I think that on some level, people are connected to the image of the person who made it, you know, and they, they've, and I think that's good and bad on some level, but for me, I try and like push that it's a positive thing that people who are like me that don't necessarily have media on this scale on these platforms to watch will definitely enjoy my movie. Outside of that, I mean, they might also hate it, and you know that's that's fine too. But I feel like it, they could they anyone who d doesn't look like me and who's a different age and you know into different stuff could also enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, but. I think audience is more of a question of marketing than the actual piece and who it could actually connect with. So it's sort of, it's sort of strange, you know. Are you recording? Hmm? Are you recording? Maybe. Yeah, you are. So let's say that one day you arrive at your home. It has been a long day during which you have worked no less than 12 consecutive hours. However, this particular day, a young lady has told you that she is coming to be in your company. So as you empty your pockets and begin to get settled, you see that she has telephoned you. Of course, you telephone her back. She tells you that she has just arrived at her own home and won't be coming to yours tonight. At that moment, given the circumstances, how would you feel? What's up, everybody? This is Lyris Beck for Real Black, and we're at the Philadelphia Film Festival with Terrence Nance, artist who made an oversimplification of her beauty. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So I really want to just get right into an oversimplification of her beauty. It's a very dense and, in my words, beautiful film um, that there's so much to unpack. Um, the subject matter, the approach, uh, the way it was shot, the different mediums. What was the greater vision behind putting, what was the process behind putting a film like this together? Um, well, the experience was the process in a lot of ways. Like, I had a situation with a woman who <laughs> was complex and I felt like, you know, we were both at a space in our lives that was ambiguous or, or the space we were at was typified by ambiguity, you know. We weren't students, we weren't professional. I was a student actually and, you know, we weren't really entirely within our identities yet, you know, and I think that that space has become elongated in a Western culture, you know, that I guess not even extended adolescence, but that extended pre-adulthood, you know, yeah. that, that I think we all go through after, after college and before we kind of find whatever it is we settle, settle into. And, you know, it's just fertile ground for uh, a lot of angst and anxiety, but also a lot of beauty and, you know, kind of wondering and possibilities that existed within our relationship that I wanted to express in a, in a piece. Yeah. Um, describe the different mediums you used and, and why it was so important to not just approach it in a linear sense. Well, I guess the, the easiest thing to say is just wasn't natural for me to do that. I, I never had a kind of conscious moment of denying anything like I don't want it to be like this linear I didn't have that moment I just sort of laid it on the paper and that's just what it was and I never questioned that and I think whereas it seems like it stands against a lot of traditions in cinema um, it doesn't really you know in, in my attitude in making it wasn't that I wasn't standing against anything or responding to anything really I was just putting it out there how it seemed most natural to me um, and that includes including a lot of different ways of making images uh, or, you know, a lot of different ways of capturing what the content of our relationship was. Nice. So at times it even seemed kind of poetic. Um, talk about some of your other artistic gifts and your artistic beginnings that helped to lend themselves to uh, an oversimplification of her beauty. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 
I was structuring it like a blues song, you know, I, I like writing songs a lot and I kind of come from music and also the, the film is going to come out with an album of songs that are associated with that time in my life. And that's why there's so much repetition because songs have choruses and I wanted that sort of structural element to be in there. Less so I wanted it to be in there, but I just built it in there when I wrote it because mm -hmm. I knew how to write songs. I didn't really know how to write, write a movie at the time. Yeah. So I think that's just what came most natural to me. Um, and yeah, after this movie and working on the music, I'm definitely going to continue to do that and work with sound a lot. And um, also just sort of moving outside of myself um, thematically, you know, I kind of was making this movie in the fine art context. You know, I was at art school when I started the movie. Right. I wasn't really in a filmmaking context. And I think, you know, moving forward, I'm definitely gonna, I thought that this was, this movie would be kind of more in museums and galleries when mm -hmm. I was making it, but mm -hmm. that hasn't been how it worked out. So uh, I think it's interesting. I'll probably move back into that space too. Yeah. So you mentioned you didn't really have a lot of experience with filmmaking. What what said, I'll take this, I'll take up the responsibility, I have the audacity to say, I'm just gonna make a film, especially as a non-film major and as a not uh, being focused in film at the time. Well, it was an emotional experience for me. It was that it had nothing to do with who I thought I was as an artist or a mm -hmm. filmmaker. It, it just had to do with how I felt about her. So it was like, my feelings for her empowered me to do whatever I was gonna do, you know, mm -hmm. if it was a, if I was going to make a dance number or something, I would have done that. <laughs> but it was just, you know, and I think in general, my way, my philosophy about all those types of things is it doesn't really matter what you are or what you're trained to do. It's just what are you going to make next? And that's what I constantly ask myself when people ask me about, oh, you do all these things. I kind of don't, I try, I extract myself from feeling the pressure of having to identify who I am. Mm -hmm. I just, I just try and focus on whatever I'm going to make next and is it going to be good? Right. You know, whatever it is. Yeah, so speaking of, of what you're going to make next, where's inspiration seeming to strike you presently? Um, politics, you know, I think a lot of the, the stuff I'm going to do next is around an angst. You know, it's portraiture of an angst that I feel about myself as a participant in uh, the political dynamic that exists in American culture, which I feel like is... I'm outside of it, like I'm outside of the dynamic in a certain way. And a lot of people I know, whole communities of people are outside of it. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm gonna try and do some work around giving visuals to that angst, that anxiety of identifying with nothing that's going on in, in the political dynamic um, that exists. So I'm doing a feature film called The Lobbyists about like these lobbyists that are outside of that dynamic and they come in and use violence to lobby things and um, you know, I'm doing some other pieces about like shorter pieces I, I, I'm going to put together kind of a show more for the gallery context the title of the show is Post Whack mm. and um, I think I'm, I'm going to do a piece, I don't want to give too much about it but it's about stop and frisk a little bit mm. and I'm going to it's going to involve people policemen stopping and frisking people in rich neighborhoods, basically. <laughs> nice, nice, so, nice. So um, I'm trying to okay. figure out the logistics of doing that. You are doing this to show her how you feel, to testify to the size and intensity of these feelings. She will see the film, smile, disaffected. You have oversimplified her beauty. My name is Terrence Nance. The name of my film is An Oversimplification of Her Beauty, and you are watching Real Black.